In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to draw a dam, how to draw a watershed, and how to draw flow lines using the Pond Builder program. With the Pond Builder program, uh, I want to start by drawing in my dam. So I'm going to go to my toolbar on my left hand side of my screen and click on the icon Draw Dam. Once I click on that icon, then I'm going to move to my aerial photo and I'm going to put my cursor where I want my dam to start. It's always best to start at the top of the hill where you want your dam to uh, start and I click once. Then I'll move down through the draw that I want to dam my water up in and to the top of the hill on the other side. I always want to draw my dam in uh, plenty far from top of hill to top of hill. If the program doesn't need that much dam, uh, it won't use it. It will just use the portion of the line that actually is needed for any certain dam. Uh, but I want to make sure it's long enough. If it's not long enough, I'll limit the, the options that I can get in Pond Builder. Once I've drawn my dam, the next step is to draw my watershed. So I'm going to click on the icon Draw Watershed. When I move into the aerial view, my watershed tool automatically hooks to the two sides of my dam. That's because my dam represents the bottom side of my watershed. When I'm drawing in my watershed, I want to move around the top of the hill, but there is a correct way to go around. You always want to start off the vertice of your dam where you double clicked or where you ed ended your dam. If you go off the other side where you initiated your dam, you'll begin to get lines that cross each other like in this example. So if you do that, it's easy to undo it by simply right clicking to undo your vertices and then you can move around the watershed in the direction um, that that is required in order to get a, an accurate um, watershed. So again, I'm going to move around the top of my hill that contributes to my watershed. And then when I get to the last vertice, I'm going to double click. Just make sure you don't get too close to your dam when you do your double click. If you actually click on your dam, uh, sometimes it can cause some problems in the program. So keep your last vertice back from from your dam. and Then double click and the program will draw in your dam. It will indicate in the middle how large your watershed is. In this case it's 134.9 acres. So once I've drawn in my dam and I've drawn in my watershed, the next step is to draw my flow lines. My flow lines represent a time of concentration or the maximum time it takes from water to run from the top of my watershed down to my dam. What I'm looking at is the longest distance I can find from the top of the watershed down to the dam. So if I start at the top of the watershed and I start drawing down on a flow path, the program measures this flow length. Now, you can always go from outside of your watershed to outside of your dam. The program will click, clip the line at the watershed and at the dam. In some cases, I don't always know what the longest flow line is. It may appear that there uh, are several possibilities, and I don't know exactly which one is the longest one. But the program allows me to draw in multiple full flow lines. Usually it takes two or three before I feel pretty comfortable that I've located the maximum flow line. And so in this case I'll draw three. Now the nice thing about Pond Builder is it measures each one of these flow lines. It determines which one is the longest one and it uses the longest flow line for the time of concentration. So again in this tutorial I've demonstrated how to draw the dam, how to draw a watershed, and how to draw flow lines for time of concentration.